Hi guys, welcome back to The Makeup Hunter. I'm Laura. In today's video, I am actually taking inspiration from one of my favourite YouTubers, Julia Adams. She is a um, huge YouTuber here on the you know the beauty space um she's a canadian youtuber um was a makeup artist and i think is now doing youtube full time and she recently came up with a video where she did top three favorites in every makeup category um i found that vis video absolutely fascinating to watch and i know some other people have done it since i know jamie page has done it as well another canadian youtuber who is another favorite youtuber of mine so i will link julia adams video down in the description box but i thought i would do my own version of it well like basically copying it completely but obviously with my own favorites um so if you are interested in hearing what are my top three favorite makeup products from every category then please keep watching if you haven't already please do subscribe to my channel i would really really appreciate it if you did i am trying to get to 100 subscribers at the moment which is a bit of a milestone for me um i'm getting close but i'm not quite there yet so anybody who subscribes it means the absolute world um give me a thumbs up um, leave me a comment hit the notification bell to be reminded on the rare occasions that i upload to this channel and let's get into the nitty gritty okay so i have pulled all of my favorite products my three favorite products from each of the makeup categories and my my, my bedroom now looks like a demolition derby has occurred in it um my makeup storage is in bits i've got boxes everywhere and my bed looks like it's exploded um i think these products that i've chosen will probably change on a regular basis um especially some of the categories change with in the seasons dependent on the type of makeup style that I'm going for so I think it would probably be a good idea to revisit this um, video perhaps in the autumn and winter to see how um, my tastes have changed with the seasons it's quite interesting to see what I've chosen here for, for myself you know to see sort of how my makeup style has changed over the years things that used to be staples and favorites in my collection i i wouldn't touch with a barge pole now so it's just it's it's been a really interesting exercise so this is probably going to be a longer video as all my videos are because i have verbal diarrhea and do not know when to stop talking um i've also had um got myself a little cosmopolitan cocktail here i needed some fuel to get me through this video so get yourself a cocktail if it's first thing in the morning perhaps don't maybe get a coffee instead um get yourself some nibbles some snacks if you are feeling the need and get comfortable and let's get into the video okay so i'm going in order of how i apply the products to my face um and i've got myself sort of a sack here to put the products in as i've talked about them to try and sort of keep things a little bit more organized so firstly primers and this is these aren't in any order so it's not like three being the worst one being the best this is just like my top three so the first one is relatively new to my collection this is the walida skin food this isn't a 
a specific primer this is a rich intensive skincare for face or body and it's for very dry and rough skin so this is basically essentially a very very thick rich moisturizer for very dry skin um, I have very dry skin on my face, it's dehydrated and I often get um, flaky patches and over the last couple of days I've got a lot of flaking on my forehead, round my mouth and my nose is incredibly sore from scratching it. Um, I've had very itchy face and I've been scratching it a lot. So I am actually wearing this as my primer today. It's a beautiful... Um, base for makeup because it plumps up your skin makes it look really juicy and hydrated and I find any foundation that I put on top of it just sits absolutely beautifully it wears really nicely through the day um, I've had my foundation on top of this now for about two hours and it's these are just sort of like my natural oils that are coming coming through this doesn't make my foundation slide off any quicker than if i was using an, another primer i'm not a huge believer in primers so going for a skincare product is is more sort of my speed and i've absolutely been loving this and i think this is going to be a mainstay in my collection for a long time to come so that's the walida skin food then the next primer that's in my top three is the Glossier Future Dew. Now this is in my current Shop My Stash rotation. I've had it for a while but not really used it very often. So I hadn't formed an opinion on what I thought about it. This is a oil and serum hybrid that has some shimmer pigment to it. When you apply it to the skin, it, it, it is an oil so it does feel like quite slippy and shiny um but the the glow that it leaves behind is absolutely beautiful the skin looks so radiant and healthy and i find makeup especially fuller coverage thicker foundations just go on top of this beautifully i've really enjoyed having it in my shop my stash rotation and i'm definitely going to be pulling this one more often and then the final one in my primer category is the Illamasqua Hydra Veil. Now this is a very thick jelly primer. Um, it's such a strange consistency and it comes with a spoon that you scoop the product out and the reason i love this so much is it's incredibly hydrating as you would imagine it says in the name hydra veil um it's incredibly hydrating it's very plumping and cooling on the skin and it just feels especially on my dehydrated skin the gel once it makes contact with the skin and it hits the warmth of your skin it just melts into the skin like water it's lovely and lightweight um the Walida skin food is quite a heavy thick cream and you can sort of feel that on the skin as it's soaking in whereas this sort of soaks in pretty much immediately and i just find foundation and any cream products that I put on top of it just glide on beautifully this is a classic product um Illamasqua have actually brought out another two versions there's an illuminating veil and a matte veil but I absolutely love the original hydra veil okay so next up is foundation and this was quite a hard category for me to pick um, at the moment I'm trying um, some more drugstore foundations and the one that I've actually got on my skin today I feel is going to become a very fast favourite but because I haven't had it long enough and tested it enough to form you know to decide whether that opinion is founded or not so my first 
favourite is a um, complete classic. I've had one of these in my collection for years and years. I've gone through about three of these. This is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid SPF 15 and I am in the shade NW13. This is um, a very full coverage foundation. It has sort of a natural matte finish but I just find it's a foundation that never lets me down. I can I like mixing foundations and I can mix pretty much any product into this foundation and it always looks good. It's one of those foundations that the longer I have it on my skin for the better it looks. Um, it's very lightweight so it doesn't feel like I've got a thick heavy layer of anything on my skin but it's a real full coverage one. It's the foundation that I go to if I am going out. Um, if you know the days when I used to go clubbing this was my clubbing foundation um, those days are long gone but this is this is the foundation that I wear if I've got a special occasion and I want my foundation to last for a really long time it holds up really well underneath a mask so this is definitely a long-term favorite and I don't think I'll be changing my opinion on that anytime soon Okay, next up, slightly different sort of speed, is the IT Cosmetics CC Cream. This is the original IT Cosmetics CC Cream. They have bought out a matte version and an illuminating version. This is just the original one and this one's my absolute favourite. I wear the shades fair and light. I mix them together. I can wear them one in my palest times and then I take the light one for when I've got a bit more of a tan. Um, I've worn this for special occasions, for days when I just want light coverage. It's a beautiful radiant finish that feels really nice on the skin it feels very lightweight it's really comfortable it wears really well but it's got excellent coverage and it's also very similar to the MAC Studio Fix Fluid in this is very customisable. So I can wear a really thin layer and get a very light coverage or I can build it up and get super full coverage. Um, it's a lot of people's favourites for a reason. It's a beautiful foundation. And then lastly in the foundation category, one that I find very similar to the Cosmetic CC Cream is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Hydrating Foundation. Now I take the shade 160. Um, out of all of the Fenty foundations, the Ease Drop and the original matte foundation, this is my absolute favourite and it's a foundation that Every time I wear it, I'm blown away by how beautiful my skin looks. Another one that the longer I wear it, the better it looks. Um, it's got a lovely radiant finish, very similar to the IT Cosmetics CC Cream, but this is sort of like full, medium to full coverage straight away. Um, I absolutely love this foundation, love it with a brush, a sponge, it's just an absolutely solid foundation. One of my top ones is the Becca Under Eye Brightener. Unfortunately, as we all know, Becca is soon to be no longer with us. They are closing their doors in September, so you will no longer be able to get this product. Um, I am considering getting a backup of this but I have been looking for some alternatives to try but in the meantime this is my absolute favourite. I had one of these several years ago and absolutely hated it which just goes to show what I was saying at the beginning of this video how my makeup style has changed. I didn't like this then because it was it's so almost greasy and emollient under the eyes but that was when my under eyes were perfect now i have fine lines wrinkles dark circles dry skin under there so this is absolutely perfect and i love to wear this um on top of a light coverage foundation with no other concealer just this tapped underneath my eyes and i'm good to go so this is definitely one of my all-time favorites 
Next is a concealer that has become a recent favourite. Um, I've had this in my collection for a long time, but um, as with the Glossier Future Dew, it was one that I tried when I initially bought it and then hadn't tried it since. But this Glossier Stretch Concealer has been in my shop, my stash and I have fallen in love with it it's the concealer I have under my eyes and on other areas of my face today it's a beautiful concealer very similar in consistency and um, wear time as the Becca under eye brightener but this one is obviously a traditional like concealer colour um, Katie Jane Hughes is um, one of my favourite makeup artists and is a big fan of this and wears this sort of all over her skin um, instead of foundation. It's a lovely dewy sort of sticky feeling concealer but once it's blended in to the skin it just looks stunning. It's not too heavy, it's not got insane coverage but it's just enough for you know for what I want um my favorite way to apply this is just with my finger I just like to warm the product up and press it into those fine lines under my eyes and I just find the warmth of my finger helps to just melt it into the skin and it gives a lovely like seamless finish so this is definitely a top favorite and then I went back and forth over the last one but I decided on the Jouer Essential High Coverage Concealer Pen. Now this is a cream concealer in a pen form. Um, it's a solid product. And this is very similar to the Glossier Stretch Concealer in that I absolutely love how this melts into my skin. But it has, it's a lot more full coverage than the Glossier Stretch and it does sort of set down into like um, a matte finish. The Glossier Stretch Concealer is quite radiant whereas this one is very opaque and sort of it like has a sort of nice natural matte finish to it um this was one that really surprised me i got it during a sale um just wanted to try it i'd heard so much about the jua cream concealer everybody was raving about that and it was completely sold out and that they had the pens like the stick pens in stock so i thought i'd try it and i do i've been I was really really pleasantly surprised and it became you know one that I couldn't put down so the Jua Essential High Coverage Concealer Pen is up there with my favourites. Okay next up we have powders. Now I struggled th with this one because I am not a powder lover. Um, I used to be, I used to absolutely cake on the powder and my all-time favorite powder was mac studio fix powder foundation i used to put that on top of my mac studio fix fluid for really full coverage really matte not going anywhere sort of makeup look now i like my skin as it is now um i don't have a trace of powder on my skin um it's all creams and i use um setting sprays to help lock everything in place so this was sort of a difficult one to pick but out of the powders that i own probably my all-time favorite is the ysl souffle de clat now this is a loose powder that has some radiance to it it's a lovely very finely milled powder and it just blends beautifully into the skin it doesn't leave my face looking cakey or heavy um it doesn't sort of clump up in weird patches on my skin it's just it does what it what I want it to, which is mattify and blur the areas that I need, but it also leaves some radiance behind. So this is um this is definitely my favourite powder in my collection. And then I also have um 
the Chanel Le Beige um, Healthy Glow Sheer Powder. This is another one that is very similar to the YSL in that it's um, it doesn't leave my skin looking heavy or cakey it just does what I need it to it's a sheer lightweight powder that has some radiance to it it's also SPF 15 which is great it's not something I, I, I realized about this until I was just looking at it but I've you know I've used a good amount of this powder and it was one that once I started using it I couldn't put it down um i like to just take this on a tapered brush and i just sort of put it um where i'm i've got larger pores sort of around my nose under my eyes and around my mouth and it's just a really beautiful powder very spendy but a beautiful powder and then my last favorite is the this um the packaging has changed on this um i thought it had been discontinued but they've just changed the packaging this is the urban decay naked skin um ultra definition pressed finishing powder and i think the name has changed slightly it's it's um the one in like it's a bronze packaging now but this is just the naked pressed powder from urban decay as you can see i've used a load of this um this is very similar to the chanel one in that it just it mattifies where i need it blurs but it doesn't leave a heavy um thick layer on my skin which i find some powders can do um i love the compact of this it's got um a sponge in the bottom part of it and it's just a really solid powder really nice really comfortable and this used to be the powder i took clubbing with me to touch up it's just it's a really really nice powder and i am hoping that i'm right and they haven't discontinued this because it'd be such a shame if they had it's a a really stunning powder now on to bronzers and i really really struggled here uh this is as i was saying at the beginning this is where this will change as the seasons change at the moment during the spring and summer i'm all about cream products um i very rarely pick up a uh, powder bronzer or powder blusher or powder highlight all i want is creams and liquids so that has been reflected in the choices I've made for my bronzers. There are powder bronzers in my collection that are favourites that will never leave my collection. But if I was to have those in front of me or these that I've got in front of me, I would go for these at the moment. But in the autumn and the winter that will change because I tend to want powders in the autumn and winter so my absolute favorite and this will come as no surprise to anybody is the benefit hula quickie contour stick this is in my project pan and i'll be sad to see it go when i do finish it if i hadn't got so many other cream bronzers in my collection i would definitely repurchase this but i need to focus on sort of trying some others and not just using this all the time which is what i'm doing at the moment that's how i know a product is a favorite if i look at everything else in my collection all the beautiful products that i've got and still keep going back to the same one and this is this one i absolutely love the color it's a nice warm bronze but it also is not too red so it does contour quite well it's a lovely creamy formula it blends into the skin beautifully it doesn't fade throughout the day it's just it's a really really lovely product um i'm not a huge fan of the hula powder bronzer from benefit but the cream is stunning and then the second bronzer that i have is in the same vein as that one 
and that is Nude Sticks Bondi Bay. This is a very similar um, formula, consistency and colour to the Hoola Quickie Contour. I would say that the New Sticks Bondi Bay is slightly more pigmented and ever so slightly more cool toned but there isn't much to choose between them and I love them both so both top favourites in the bronzer category and I loved Bondi Bay so much that it sent me on a Nude Sticks sent me down a nude sticks black hole and I've now got loads of nude sticks products in my collection and it was this that did it so that just goes to show how much I love this product so the last product I got to I think was Bondi Bay by nude sticks so my next favorite bronzing product um I couldn't do a favorite um, without mentioning the Fenty Beauty cream bronzer this is the cheeks out cream bronzer I've got two of these I love it that much I've got the shade butter biscuit which is this one here and then the slightly deeper and warmer one which is the shade macchiato um, I've used butter biscuit the most um, this is just a beautiful beautiful formula of cream bronzer this and the cream blushes were my sort of gateway drug into cream cream cheek products um i just found this so easy to work with so creamy and blendable it lasts really well on the skin and it has a level of coverage on it that sort of seems to just perfect the skin it's honestly such a beautiful formula to be honest there's not a lot that Fenty you know that Rihanna brings out with Fenty that I don't like and this is is definitely one of my top products from the brand okay next up I think I'm on to highlighting products now one of my all time favourite highlighters is the MAC Extra Dimension Skin Finish in the shade Double Gleave. Now I've got three of the MAC Extra Dimension Skin Finishes and this is definitely my favourite tone. It's just a beautiful um, sort of champagne gold shade um these extra dimension skin finishes they aren't chunky they don't have glitter particles in them they perform like a cream they're sort of like um a, like a baked jelly type formula and they just buff and blend into the skin beautifully they don't enhance texture too much and they can be absolutely blinding or you can make them quite subtle they are honestly a gorgeous gorgeous formula of highlighter and this is perhaps one of my all-time favorite highlighters next up is one of the first really the first cream highlighters that i tried and that is the dominique cosmetics skin gloss this is the shade glossed peach i also have another one i think it's sunset glow is the other one that i've got but this was the first one i got this is a stunning stunning formula it's like um it's like a gel is how I would describe it and it's poured it's poured into this pan um it's got sort of like a sticky like balm type of texture to it and even though in the pan it looks quite dark I actually got this one because all the other colors were sold out at the time and I thought it probably won't work as a highlight for me but I can use it as like a blush topper but this is such an interesting formula that 
if I show it you on the back of my hand so it's like um, a very warm peach gold but then when you put it onto the skin and smooth it in the base pigment sort of melts into the skin and disappears and what you're left with is just this really beautiful warm glow doesn't feel heavy on the skin it feels just lovely and hydrating and your skin just looks so glowy and juicy and healthy and that is one of the reasons why I much prefer a cream highlight to a powder these days and then the last highlight that I've got here is one that was I discovered towards the end of last year and I don't really have anything else like this in my collection it's it's very unique so this is the Fenty Beauty matchsticks but this is in the shade pearl I've got several of the matchsticks I absolutely love them I've got three of the blushes and this one um, I absolutely I haven't tried any of the um, like foundation or contour matchsticks they don't really appeal to me but the shimmery ones that I've got I use as blushes and then I've got this one which is sort of separate from the rest of them in that this is a different formula so basically this is the shade pearl this is what it looks like in the pan it's just a white stick and it looks almost like, like it's melted and when you apply this to the skin it feels like nothing like when you're when you're rubbing it onto the skin it's like nothing's happening nothing's coming off almost as if it's made of plastic not not cream but what it leaves behind is this gorgeous wet looking very thin highlight so I'm not sure how you're going to be able if you're going to be able to see it but you can see it just leaves there's no base pigment to it there's just a very subtle gold sheen that's left behind it doesn't disturb powder it doesn't pick up foundation it blends absolutely beautiful this is truly unique in my collection and absolutely stunning I really hope that Rihanna brings out um, more of this formula but that have perhaps got different tones to them and have some base pigment because in comparison the original Shimmer Fenty matchsticks are quite a dry formula and very pigmented whereas this is it's almost like an oil a very thin oil it's so so strange but like I say truly truly unique in my collection and I just think it's absolutely stunning I love it okay and now we're on to blush which is actually one of my favorite makeup products and this was a category that was really really difficult to pick just three so the three that I've chosen um as with the highlighter and bronzer, I am mostly loving creams at the moment. But when it comes to picking my favourites, there were two in particular that stood out and they're both powders. So the first one is the Colourpop and Kathleen Lights blushes. Now I have all four that she brought out with this launch and I love all of them but the shade Loon Has It is the one that I've used the most and that I kept going back to and couldn't put down when I initially got it so it's a very unusual tone it almost looks like a bronzer but when it's on the skin it does have um, sort of like a pinky peachy undertone to it it's really unusual the powders of these Colourpop bronzers are so soft and silky they're super pigmented but this blush is just 
so pretty and leaves your skin it's got a little bit of glow to it it's not shimmery but it's not matte either and it just leaves the cheeks with that beautiful sun kissed bronzy um peachy glow i honestly this is probably the favorite blusher in my collection um i'll probably change my mind in an hour but these blushes any time i've thought about doing a favorites video or a all-time favorite products video these were always the ones that i chose in the blusher category and i don't hear enough people talking about the ColourPop powder blushers for the price tag they're brilliant and then at the complete other end of the spectrum price wise is a recent blusher into my collection and that is the dior christmas blusher this was a special edi edition for christmas this year just gone and this is the shade golden night so i think there was two blushes with this collection but this is the one that my parents got for me and it's a lovely proper you know your typical blush color so it's that kind of color that your cheeks would go if you had been out in the cold for too long a, a real like rosy glow it does have a sheen to it it has like a gold shimmer and the dior blush formula is so so soft um but there is a lot of like color payoff that's it on my finger i'm just going to swatch it next to the other one as you can see this one has got um quite a lot of gold reflex to it but they don't sort of they don't look like a glitter like loads of glitter fall out on your cheeks they they buff into the skin lovely and just add that gorgeous healthy radiance to your cheeks this was like one of the products that i had at christmas that i just when i saw it i couldn't wait to put it on and when i finally did put it on i was just blown away by how pretty this blush is the blush the cream blush in my collection that i've had for the longest time and have consistently gone back to and used over and over is the Fenty cream blushes. I have four of these. I've got the shades Rose Latte, Cool Berry, um, Daiquiri Drip, and I think um, Bikini Martin, uh, is it Bikini? The, the bright pink one, anyway. My absolute favorite and the one that <laughs> was actually the one i thought would be my least favorite but the one i've used the most is the shade cool berry now i love this because it's so different from anything else in my collection blush wise so it's it's beautiful berry tone with a gold reflect to it the gold reflect is really subtle but it just adds a gorgeous glow to the cheeks and this is the kind of blusher that goes with absolutely any look that you do this one and the shade rose latte are just the perfect go with anything blush but it just so happens that i've used cool berry the most out of the two so this formula is very similar to the bronzers they go on to the skin beautifully they don't pick up any product that's underneath they blend really easily and they last a really long time on the skin um blush is one of the first sort of areas of the face to fade and i don't find these fade on me at all i think these are incredible so stunning and i'm really hoping that she brings out some more shades specific brow products that i consistently go back to are the benefit goof poof goof proof 
brow pencil now this is the slightly thicker one this is the like triangular shaped one and i use the shade four in this pencil uh, this is my favorite brow pencil um it's the perfect amount of waxiness um it's very pigmented but not too pigmented and i love the shape of this for um the, the speed of it um just i tend to only fill in like the baseline of my brows and then i just brush the product through and upwards so this is absolutely perfect the spool is really nice that it comes with um i have the um gimme brow the is it the gimme brow the thin one the micro brow pencil but this one is my favorite out of the two and then another product that i consistently go back to is the glossier boy brow this is what i have in my brows today with a benefit brow powder um i use the shade black this is like a fibrous brow gel and i just love how fluffy it makes my brows um, as i say i use the shade black um, because i do like to have that dark tint to my brows and it's just a real good never let me down you know workhorse product in my collection kind of boring just a brow gel but i've tried a lot of brow gels and this is probably my favorite and then a new to me product that has already taken place as a favorite in my collection um i can hands down say that this is you know i don't need to test this out for much longer i know it's a favorite and that is the pink honey wonder wax in the shade chocolate now this is a supposed to be a no activator required brow wax this gives the look of laminated soap brows um their original product you did use an activator it's like the original like soap brow but it came in a jar with the hole in the middle so it's sort of like more convenient and this is their tinted non-activator required version but i do find that i need to use an activator with with my particular one i mentioned this in my haul video i'm not sure whether mine is faulty or dry or anything like that but i'm not bothered because all i do is spray a tiny little bit of setting spray or water into this use the spoolie and it gives me the most fluffy slicked tinted brows and i don't need to use a pencil or anything like that i just use this and it's all I need. Smells beautiful, smells like chocolate, and there's a ton of product in here. This will last forever. Eye products. In Julia Adams' video, she split her eye products into sections. So she had like eyeshadow palettes, one and done, mascara, eyeliner, that sort of thing. I've done the same. Um, for my eyeshadow palettes, this was really, really tough um, to pick three eyeshadow palettes that you know i tried to think of it if if i could only if i lost everything and i had to start again what three eyeshadow palettes would i pick first and i've i've chosen three but i've got a funny feeling that if you were to ask me say in a week's time it would change um the the palettes that i've chosen i have used very very little but they are the palettes within my collection that i think are the most beautiful and the most representative of of me and the things that i like so first of all this was the obvious one to me this was the natasha denona metropolis palette this is the most expensive eyeshadow palette in my collection and it's one that i went back and forwards over for months and months before i finally decided to treat myself um it's just if i had to describe me in an eyeshadow palette it would be this palette 
the colour story it's just my all time favourite colours the greens, the warm tones, the golds, the autumn colours this is just to me the most beautiful palette in my collection it's not the one I've used the most it's not the one that I go to if I don't know what to do it's not a workhorse palette in my collection it's just the one that I look at and I think that is incredibly beautiful I love Natasha Denona's cream to powder formula and this palette has quite a few of the cream to powder formula in it when I look at this I just feel so inspired and I just want to sit down and create so that's the reason it's made it into my top three then next I have another Natasha Denona palette I very nearly chose all three of my Natasha Denona palettes for this but I realised that was a bit silly because I have barely used these palettes. But the next one is the bronze palette. This, like the Metropolis palette, is like my colours. I absolutely love a warm toned smoky eye and this palette gives me everything I need to create it so it's just if I was going on holiday or um, you know going to stay at a friend's for a period of time this is more than likely the palette that I would take with me I can create anything from everyday one shadow looks to the most you know smoky gorgeous glam eyeshadow looks and these are always going to be the tones that I gravitate towards so that's what I that's why I chose the bronze and I like I say I very nearly chose the glam palette as my third option but I'm not a huge wearer of cool tones as much as i love that palette and i think it's beautiful and the looks i've created with it are some of my favorites it's it's not the palette that i you know would close my eyes and pick up you know without thinking the one palette that has everything i need as same as the bronze but is more of a an everyday if i was working this is a palette that i would probably wear for work and that is the charlotte tilbury pillow talk palette this is the um one of her 12 pans this is the instant eye palette and this just has you know it has my browns that i like i have my more glam like smoky pinks um one and done shades this is just and the quality of this palette is impeccable um it i had it for my birthday so i've only had it since the end of january but the looks I've created with it have been, you know, I've absolutely loved them. I've not had to think too much about it. They've been such easy looks to create. And, you know, it's just... It's, it's a palette that I can rely on. You know, I can rely upon this palette to not let me down. And that is, when I think about, you know, my favourites, that's, you know, that's what I'm thinking of. These are the most reliable products within my collection. One and Done Shadows. This was more difficult for me because I have, I've only just started getting into um, One and Done Shadows. I have got quite a lot of the MAC single pot shadows and if I was doing a one and done look those would have been the ones that I would usually go for but I've recently got more into cream shadows and li like liquid shimmer shadows and that sort of thing so these are newer into my collection but are the, the ones that as soon as I thought one and done these were the ones that came to mind 
um, the first one is actually not really an eyeshadow but it is one that has become a staple in my collection I absolutely love how it looks um, it's the Urban Decay Primer Potion in the shade Sin now this is an eye primer but unlike most eye primers this is tinted and shimmery and it looks incredible all over the eye on its own I often put this on to do an eye look and think I think I'm just gonna you know it, it look nice just left as it is with a bit of you know brown liner and mascara it's an eye primer so it's a lovely formula it cancels out any of the veins on my eyelid or any redness I might have it doesn't crease it stays really well and I just think it's such a pretty natural sort of you know sheen across the lid so even though it's not really an eyeshadow for me this is the perfect one and done you know just throw this all over the eye brown liner black mascara done that would look beautiful so I had to include that and then another sort of recent one to my collection is one my mum gave me I'm not sure if YSL make these anymore but this is the full metal shadow and this is the shade number six so this is just a liquid shadow and it's like a champagne -y sort of gold shimmer shadow it's actually really really similar to sin the only difference is that this is perhaps a bit more coppery than sin sin's perhaps more cool toned and this has more sort of glitter particles in when you blend it in so that's that's it underneath there and this is like a very thin like liquid shadow it's not super impactful it's not super glittery but it just leaves a nice sort of soft wash of sparkle across the lid and the lot when the light hits it it's just so pretty the the glitters that are in it are all multi you know multicolored multi-dimensional and it's just i think it's just really really pretty and one that i haven't got a lot of use out of but i'm definitely intending to and then the next one is one I've had in my collection for a very long time and like the Natasha Denona palettes when I look at this shadow I just think it's one of the prettiest single shadows in my collection it's from Dior and it's the um, ultra smooth high impact eyeshadow in the shade golden spotlight and this is just pure glam evening out elegant eyeshadow it is just a, a very light champagne gold but it is absolutely packed full of sparkle so i'll just swatch it it's so creamy it is a pet it's not a cream it's a powder but it's a real creamy soft buttery powder so that's it on my finger and then oh it's so sparkly and reflective i don't even know if it's going to pick up But yeah, that's just, oh, it's honestly so, so beautiful. Um, and one that I, I keep saving for special occasions. But I just, oh, it's so beautiful. And I really, 
I cannot wait to have an occasion to wear that all over my eyes. I think it's just gorgeous. And then for the final eye products, we've got eyeliner and mascara. Mascara was a dead easy one for me to pick. Um, my absolute favourites are the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash. This is the mascara I use every day on my bottom lashes. This is a tubing mascara. It doesn't smudge. It doesn't flake. It's got a lovely thin wand so you can get right close to the bottom lashes and this is one that i have repurchased time and again absolutely love it similar to that one is the kevin aquan the volume mascara again this is a tubing mascara this is um more geared towards volume obviously as the name suggests very standard thin traditional wand but it's brilliant for getting right at the base of the lashes it's easy to build up and get real full impact and again it's a tubing mascara so it's not going to smudge or flake and then for a traditional more of a traditional mascara the charlotte tilbury full fat lashes is a long-term favorite I have had a few samples of this and got the full size because I loved it so much. It's the type of, even though it says full fat lashes, it's a very everyday mascara. It gives a very light, like fluttery, um, pretty look to the lashes it's not doesn't give too much drama doesn't give too much length or dramatic curl or anything like that it's just a nice light fluttery mascara and is one of my all-time favorites i absolutely love 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 and then finally we're on to lips and this was another one that was a really difficult one for me to pick in Julia Adams video she did lipsticks, lip liners and lip glosses. I'm not a big fan of lip gloss. I very, very rarely wear it. I've just slicked on the Fenty Glow for this video to give my lips some hydration. But I never think to wear a gloss. So I haven't chosen a gloss. This was really difficult because I have so many lipsticks that I love and that I reach for over and over again but the ones that stood out to me at the moment today are the Dior Stella Halo Shine lipsticks I've talked about these lipsticks on my channel time and time again my favorite shade is this pink one called Artie Star this is the shine balm formula that has sort of like some glitter running through it but you don't feel it on the lips it's incredibly hydrating it makes your lips look plump and juicy it's so comfortable and the colors in it are really fun i've got three of these and i absolutely love them this is one of the lipsticks that i just reach for over and over because it's just so easy to wear so comfortable i don't necessarily need a lip liner with it i can just throw it in my bag reapply i can get a really blotted sort of like stained lip look with it or i can build it up to give full opacity for like a real bright punchy lip color very very similar to those are the fenty beauty slip shine lipsticks this is my favorite color out of the ones i've got this is the shade goji gang which is like a nice like nudie color exactly the same sort of thing as the dior stella halo shines these are very sticky but comfortable balmy shine formula again same as the dior i don't have to use a lip liner with it i don't have to think too much about it i've got most of the shades in this formula and this goji gang is my favorite it's just a nice go with anything nude and then lastly um 
this was a difficult one to choose but it's it's the lipstick colour that sort of goes with everything and I don't really have to think about it. So this is Charlotte Tilbury Hot Lips 2 in the shade JK Magic. This is a lovely peachy nude and again like I say it's just a lipstick that I don't have to think too much about. The formula's gorgeous, it's hydrating, it's not it's not matte, it's it's a satin formula. Uh, very creamy, extremely pigmented, like one swipe opacity. Um, that's the shade there. It's just a lovely, light, peachy nude. Um, absolutely love all Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. I haven't found a lipstick of hers, bullet lipstick, that I don't like. And I have very many shades from her. But JK Magic is probably my favourite because of the sim the simplicity of it. It's just a go with anything peachy nude. And then we have, oh, I forgot, in the eye category, eyeliners. Um, I totally missed those. So, <sighs> eyeliners are a bit of a difficult one because... I, I have so many that I like and I haven't tried many that I've not not thought were great. Um, but the ones that stand out to me are my two Victoria Beckham liners. These are the, um, I think they're the Satin Kajals. Yes, yeah, Satin Kajal liners. And I've got the shades Brond and Bordeaux. So I've got like, um, bronze is like an olive toned bronze and then bordeaux is a lovely rich red wine color these are a gel formula they when you first apply them they feel wet um so you have time to sort of like smudge them and blend them and then when they once they dry down they stay straight away mostly i'm wearing eyeliner in my waterline and these are straight up straight away pigmented in the waterline great liners um i hope she brings out some more colors because she's only got about four or five colors but these i picked both of these um because these are just they're so different you know one's a metallic one's a matte and they're just really beautiful eyeliners and then another one that is just like a workhorse liner in my collection i reach for it very often and it's the shade um baked from melt which is like this mustardy brown i love this in my waterline um it has like a white base to it so it's it's a really unusual colour, that's it there. Um, but because it's got like a creamy base to it, it's quite brightening in the waterline, even though it's like this mustardy colour, and it makes the green in my eyes look very green. So all Melt liner products are beautiful. I've actually got... Um, several of their lip liners and they're just a beautiful beautiful formula so going back to lips now after that slight detour um we have my three favorite lip liners um again this was quite a difficult one to choose because i've got so many that i love and i find that a lot of my luxury lip liners the formula is very similar so i've got three here so i've got vive this is the shade bark from vive and then i've got um pillow, pillow talk three intense from charlotte tilbury and then i've got the shade foxy from melt cosmetics now all three of these liners the formula is very very similar i have multiple colors from each each like range um i haven't really picked my favorite colors i just grabbed the the ones that were closest to me um pillow talk three intense is probably my favorite color out of the charlotte tilbury ones i've got it gives me a really dark sort of like grungy lip line and i like pairing it with a lighter lipstick whereas the other two these are just sort of like the nudes out of them that i've got 
um, the, the formula of all three of these is it's very creamy, very pigmented, but it dries down and it lasts on the lips. They don't tug or drag at the lips, so you can fill in your whole mouth without any problem. So pigmented and creamy, but not so creamy that they spread outside of your lip line and bleed everywhere. So I'm a, a lip liner fiend. I can't apply lipstick usually without a lip liner so I have multiple of each brand and I just absolutely love them best best lip liner formula in my collection coming close behind these was the Victoria Beckham beauty lip liners um but I only have one of hers and it's a traditional like wooden pencil um and I've not used it a whole heap, so I haven't been able to form as much of an opinion on that as I have these. So, that was a very long video and took me ages to film, but we're done. We're at the end. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you stayed till the end. Um... If you haven't checked it out already, go and watch Julia Adams and Jamie Page's versions of these videos. They have some, they have, both have amazing makeup collections and access to products that us poor Brits don't have. So go and check out those videos. Julia Adams was obviously, it was her idea originally. And now I'm going to tidy up the big mess that is around me and stretch my legs because they've both gone to sleep. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a like and leave me a comment. Um, I hope that whatever is going on in your life at the moment isn't too overwhelming. And if it is, I'm sending you massive amounts of love and inner strength. Keep loving yourself. Keep loving each other. I love you and I'll see you in my next one.